I just let go. Change my life. Change the way I think. Change my life. Um, being very emotional. Welcome back to the Polaris Podcast, the number one podcast in the world, as we, we've been using. I'm <laughs> using it. We're just trying to I'm using just it. jam it down people's throats. Yeah, well, yeah. someone's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today we have a couple of special guests. We have Jean and, is it Allura? Allura? Is that how I say it? Allura. Yeah, you get that Allura. Right. Thank God. Yeah. Normally it's my name that people get wrong, <laughs> yeah. but here yeah. we go. How are you? Doing well. Yeah, really excited to be here. Stoked to be here. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. I've uh, heard a lot about you guys. A lot of people... Have you gone to Gene Kelly? Have you done this? Have you done this? And I was like, hear about him, but I haven't met him yet. So, yeah, it's lovely to meet you. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> it's nah, been pretty good so far. <laughs> I, I'm sure we'll have fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one, of, um, one of our facilitators, Acacia, come to, I don't know if it was, it was I think it was both of you. There. It would have been Altered States. Yeah, I think in she went Charles to that. Town. That yeah. was in yeah, a little while ago. Yeah, 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 I, I remember. She loved it. Meeting her, yeah. yeah, she was couldn't speak highly of it. She was just, I think, the whole week after every single message was just like, and they did this, and then this, and this <laughs> is this. I'm like, I told you, you would be unreal. Like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. been a real vibe actually watching how altered states has taken off mm. and the level of um interest in creating that shift in consciousness. Yeah, um, it was kind of a co creation for us to bring a really big breathwork event which has a slightly different feel to how breathwork has been vibing recently with kind of those deeper healing, I suppose, like very um, emotionally based experiences. Sure. We're really, we're looking to bring in a space where you could access a higher level of consciousness. Yeah, I love it. And that's just had this ripple effect where people have been like, yeah, we really want to get involved and experience that. And mm. we've been really excited to bring that to so many people and yeah, literally sold out nearly every event which we're so grateful mm. for because we're feeling a shift in the consciousness as that's happening. Lots of people are accessing amazing states of, of living and being and exploring more of themselves and their healing. So Beautiful. it's been really cool. Yeah, it's been a great way to express myself as well. Mm. I was doing um, smaller breathwork events in my shed mm -hmm. uh, not long after I finished my breathwork training mm -hmm. and I called those mushroom ceremonies because – as we spoke a little bit mm. before we started recording, um, it was my goal to sort of recreate the psychedelic experience mm. in a way that doesn't require the use of illegal psychedelic drugs, although that's changed recently. Yes. Today, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, July 1st, I believe the law has changed. Yeah. yeah, so that's super exciting. Um, but yeah, putting a completely different spin on breath work, you know, moving away from, as Allura said, that space of emotional release, which is great to have that. Mm. But um, I'm seeing that a lot. And that wasn't my personal experience with breath work. When I did my first breath work experience, I had a Satori moment, mm -hmm. which was this blissful moment where you become one with all and you feel connected to something higher. And mm -hmm. it was exactly what I'd had on my psilocybin experiences. Mm -hmm. And finally, this I saw a way to bring these altered states that have so much promise for health and healing, a way to bring that to people in a way that is legal and accessible. And yeah, it's been, obviously there's a thirst for it. People yeah. are interested in exploring mm -hmm. these altered states mm -hmm. and um, obviously the legalizing of psilocybin and MDMA for um, psychotherapy and, yep. and that type of stuff. It's, um, we're in the third wave, mm -hmm. you know, of, of psychedelic, psychedelic renaissance. Super cool. Love it. Yeah, I love it. It's, yeah, it's been awesome to watch. Like, like I, I know we, we connected a while ago now, but it's been awesome to see you guys come together and then create like i don't even know how you created this and i don't even know what, how the downloads come through but like i, I do want to find out because that was <laughs> it's unbelievable to watch and like i said like um every single person i know that's gone to it has just raved on about it so yeah. credit to both of you because yeah it's unbelievable and like you said there is a thirst for it it's like people do want this type of modality in their life and you know for you both of you to come together and spread this so cool. Yeah, I feel like um, it's been this really incredible divine blend of both of our gifts. Mm. So I'm more, I'm probably more in the energetic consciousness realms. I had a massive, similar to like a near-death experience where my consciousness left my body for a period of time um, about five years ago. And then when it came back, I was able to access a lot more information about reality. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of those experiences where people leave their body and then look down at themselves lying there? I um, had a bit of an experience. We did a breath work at one of his reconnections when I was a client 
and I had this added body experience where I was looking at my like I saw myself like leave my body, like the old version of myself, and then I went through this whole journey of like what my future could look like, yeah. and then I just dropped back into my body, and I remember just I just sat up in my head, and then Jacob said actually physically sat up, and I remember it was like I was looking at him. And it was these gold pyramids, and it was him just in this like big chief white like outfit with a it was just a white space, and he's just like, "Are you ready?" And just like stomp this like stick, and then he just dropped. I just dropped back into it, and then the next day he said, "Are you ready to start working with me?" And I was like, "That's what I saw," and it was just crazy. Like when I saw this mm. stuff that's, that's happened, yeah, it's unbelievable. That's what it's like. Cause yeah. that was the shift that happened in my life, and everything from that point on was different because. Mm. Something happens when you access more of your true self yeah. and bring that into a physical body. It took me a couple of years to actually recalibrate after my experience because it was such a massive shift in my identity. Mm. Um, but that was a couple of years ago and then meeting Jean, I feel like he brings so much of this incredible earth medicine and connection to breath. So I think the creation is that I'm kind of in those a like ethereal realms and Jean's very grounded in... The earth medicine, I think we kind of are here mm. to meet in the yeah. middle and create from that space. What I really love talking about is we both have come to the same conclusions, but she's taken this route that's more mystical and, as she said, energetic and out-of-body experience and really connected to source, whereas I kind of got there through an understanding of the nervous system, how to change the brain, mm. a really material, scientific kind of approach. But we can both make the argument from both ends why meditation is important, how the breath can help you, um, love and love for yourself and others and forgiveness, mm. all these things that I think ultimately when you get far enough on the journey, you conclude that you know forgiveness is better than condemnation, unconditional love is better than conditional love, mm -hmm. and these kind of you know modes of operating that are associated with higher levels of consciousness and greater awareness of the whole, um, you know, and then it improves your lives. And you guys, you know, both have had that experience. I've had it. I'm not sure. Have you had an experience like that, Jake? Massively. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So you can understand how these altered states where you glimpse at the divine mm. and you see that you are part of the <coughs> whole and you bring that back. Mm. You know, it re reorganizes the brain. There's a bit of an understanding that I've developed on how it reorganizes the brain. Yeah. Which is pretty interesting. But, um, and that's what we're here to do. The more people who can access this kind of medicine, mm -hmm. you know, and just or just any way they can get to a place where they're able to love and lead from their heart more, that's what we're here to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah um, I love that. <laughs> when Tahi went through that, a really cool thing for me was two days before that event, I actually had the same like visualization, except I was taking him through it and like taking him along the journey. And then he literally, the, when I rang him about it he like spoke everything and I was like, oh man, that's, that was like at the really weird moment. I was like, I saw all of that and you just literally described everything because we hadn't spoke about it before he started speaking. Yeah, because he, um, it. it didn't even cross my mind that I wanted to do this type of work because I'm a concreter and I, um, he was at, when we were at the event, he was talking about, I can even remember talking to um, a guy we used to have working for us that he's looking for another guy to come on. I didn't think in my head, like, oh, that could be me. I just was, like, just looked over it, just like, oh, yeah. I don't know if I really know anyone. And then after that meditation, I kind of was just like, what the hell is this? And then literally the next day I was laying in bed, and I remember the phone call, and it was, like, 8 o'clock at night, and I just, like, I just started crying. I just, like, I'll call you back. I need to meditate. I need to go through this. Uh -huh. And I just sat, sat in the corner of your room and just meditated, just, like, just, yeah, full, just went into it, and I just, yeah. Very it's grateful for it. It's so powerful. Yeah. Well, it's mm. kind of similar vibe to how I met Jean because well, I actually got a download through the universe about how to find him as well. So beautiful. that was a really amazing experience. We call that a quantum leap, by the way, uh -huh. yeah. where you're going one way, then all of a sudden you're in this new place. New reality. Do you guys want to hear the story? Yeah, of I understand. I yeah. definitely do. Yeah. Well, um, prior to meeting Jean, I run retreats, and um, I was in a space where. I was getting the sense that I needed a masculine counterpart in the space to really bring in some of the, as I mentioned before, the earth medicine. Like I was looking not necessarily for someone that was going to come and do psilocybin at the retreats. I wasn't wanting that, but someone that knew the consciousness of it so that could expand the experience that the, the participants had and bring in more of these modalities like um, breath work, ice baths, um, all these kind of really connective body processes. And... Um, yeah, I was just given the message that I needed to find someone that worked with mushrooms and that was a breathwork facilitator. 
Uh, and within a kind of a week of that, I saw this little pop up <laughs> on my Instagram that there was a guy that was um, running these breathwork ceremonies inspired by the psilocybin journey. And I was kind of thought that was my moment to slide into the DMs and go, hey, <laughs> just wondering if you're interested in running a retreat with me. Do you want to chat? And Jean was absolutely like, yeah, let's let's chat and, and yeah. find out what's what's up. So my journey up until that point, um, the two biggest things that had shifted my ability to operate effectively was meditation and psilocybin. And I would actually say meditation was more powerful than psilocybin for the record. Mm -hmm. I feel like with psilocybin becoming legalized, a lot of people think it's the silver bullet. But what we've observed is that it's just another thing that people project the answer to outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. Something else that has the answer that isn't you. And then they're going to be led to disappointment when they go on the journey and mm -hmm. discover that that isn't the answer. The answer's within always. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, psilocybin was very powerful for me. And then meditation followed it up even, even, in an even bigger way. And that led to me being really, really um, effective in, in the way I approach things. But then I discovered breath work. I said this to Tahi before we started recording that slow breathing is like meditation fast breathing can induce these altered states. Mm. So Eureka, I found this approach. And then part of my um, personal journey was beginning to express myself. So for many years, would not speak of the mushrooms. I was a professional. They were illegal. Would never dare speak of them. But as I started to begin to love myself and express who I was, part of that was waving the mushroom flag. Mm. And I'm glad I did because if I hadn't done that and started expressing what I'm passionate about, Allura would never have reached out. So mm. very true. Yeah, it was pretty amazing that synchronicity. And um, for me, it was like kind of a bit like you, Tai. I was like, this is just professional. Yeah. I'm just going to go on a road trip and check out the retreat venue. <laughs> like, there's no way anything could ever happen. I'm just kind of, you know, I need someone to come and do breath work and hold this space. And it was all, all good. But um, as soon as we kind of got in the car together, it was like, well, maybe actually there might be <laughs> something else. <laughs> That's brewing here. The body, the body was speaking more than the yeah. than the <laughs> conscious <laughs> mind was like, no, this is a work thing. <laughs> yeah, but we Makes we me blush. <laughs> <laughs> we went away for you know that four day road trip to Victoria to see the retreat venue, and we fell in love, and we came back as a committed couple. You know, all in. There was no grey area of we're seeing each other and this and that. It was like. Let's that go. Was actually, yeah, a cool process actually to go through. And I think it's kind of an interesting one that we could maybe share for people looking to like go into a committed relationship. Yeah. Because I think for us. We, we need this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think for us, the foundation of our creation is that we are committed. There's no kind of gray area about the fact that we've got a mutual mission and that our priority is our relationship and our family. And then what we create. But um, to be in that, I think it was had to be very clear that it was going to be exclusive and we were going to be committed to that. So we had a really beautiful conversation upon returning from this road trip about why and how that would happen. And maybe you want to share that, that part. Yeah, so for me, um, Allura turned me from a boy to a, more of a man. You know, I had a history of just toxic relationships um, and that was rooted in a love of a lack of love for myself. Mm. And that would be reflected in relationships. It manifested as, as a lot of self sabotage and a lot of unnecessary suffering. And um, you know, I was willing to commit if I could find someone who wanted, who made me want to commit. Mm. That was the issue. Like I was, you know, so you know, it would it was serial monogamy, I would say. And um, when we first got together, I hope this is what you're referring to, mm. you know, it was sort of discussing the um, parameters of the relationship. And at that point, I'd floated like open relationships or been interested in how that might work because, you know, nothing previous to that had. Mm. So I thought, okay, I've got to stay open to what might be right for me. And Allura just said, look, if you want to do that, that's fine. But if you're going to decide that, I'm going to decide this and not be with you. Um, so if you're in, you've got to be all in. And I thought, well... I definitely don't want to miss out on this. Mm. Um, and I suppose if my heart changes, we can just call it a day. Mm. But as soon as I committed to her, it was the most wonderful, freeing thing I've ever done. Yeah. Suddenly all these loose ends and 
half ins, half outs were just done with. And I was fully committed to someone who has the same values as me, a mutual mission, um, divine heart. Mm. And that allowed us to really, you know, I say that between us is a seed that bears fruit of its kind. Between us, us, you know, I feel is such a beautiful, healthy, open, as in um, we uh, communicate openly. Mm -hmm. There's no judgment. I can say how I feel and she can as well. We hold space each, uh, for each other to do that. And that's the seed and the seed grows into fruit, which is how we show up in relationship. It's um, how we show up for the kids. Allura has three kids from a previous marriage that mm -hmm. I'm now a stepfather to, which has been wonderful to step up into, into that role. And then things like altered states, which is straight from the heart, the inner liberation workshop, which is straight from the heart. All, all we do, our retreats, one thing I can say for sure is that people feel the love. I'm feeling it right now. Yeah. Ever since you just walked in, like when you talk, you both look at each other. I'm just like, I'm mean, just here for the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful to watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you know, and it, we feel it and you're not the first person to say that. And mm. I think it, that's, that's it. Yeah. That's mm. it. And then you can... I think it's been, yeah, that was really critical for me, that moment of safety and security and the commitment, but also the knowing that there's a continual evolution that has to be invested in. Mm. So there's nothing that's ever taken for granted in our in the space between us, which I feel is very powerful as well. It's like we're all in for every moment, but every moment counts. There's mm. not like a complacency that happens when we when we've made that decision. So and I think co-creating and working together and also being together in a relationship, it's like it's kind of an amazing art form because it's all mm. intertwined. There's no um, – for me it feels like whole. Instead of being like there's relationship and then there's work, it's like we become one with the whole. of Everything, everything yeah. Everything is, is a lot like an act of love, not just like we I, – I don't go to work. It's the expression of my truth and our truth in what we do as opposed yeah. to like we're going to go and do something to get something. Mm -hmm. It has to be all together. And I think that's why it's so beautiful to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for that we can do that together, you know, and share that, mm -hmm. that time. Yeah, for me, um, I knew that, you know, when I was single before I'd met Allura, what was most important to me for a relationship was that the relationship itself would become the spiritual practice as a old coach that i had an old business coach who said that your two biggest sources of spiritual growth are your relationship and your business and um yeah i knew that you know you, your partner can reflect back to you things that you don't see about yourself mm. and maybe you should listen to what they have to say because you're not omniscient and all-knowing mm. so i really took that attitude of humility into our relationship and understood that i'm not perfect but i do want to be better and i'm open-minded enough to hear what she has to say and i've got a lot of trust for laura i trust her more than anything so when she reflects back to me uh, it really is an opportunity for growth and that's what we've always found like you know we've had tough conversations but it's always been rooted in this open-mindedness open-heartedness and are willing to learn and grow and, and shop as best we can so mm. it's been inc like incredible the whole we just had a one-year anniversary and it was an opportunity I was about to say are we, are we here for the proposal <laughs> I'm, I'm all about it <laughs> well actually it's Tahi <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting <laughs> just but yeah it's a, we just had a one-year anniversary and it was really cool to reflect on everything that we've accomplished and mm. speaking of quantum leaps like prior to meeting Allura, I'd think, man, okay, I've got to meet someone, then we've got to date for a couple of months, then we've got to be committed, and then after a couple of years of being together, we've got to get engaged, and that'll take a couple of months, and we get married, then a couple of months of being married, or years of being married, then we have kids, and I want to have a couple of kids, and da 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 Like, man, I'm going to be like 45 before I settle down. One year later, I'm in a committed <laughs> relationship with three kids that are 8, 10, and 12, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's quantum leap. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. have fathomed how it could have happened like this but mm. this is where i am and mm. it's great it's incredible yeah it's really powerful Unreal. Mm. so good hey, good love <laughs> so good <laughs> so love, good love. yeah yeah mm. me too i'm a big love love person mm. but, yeah. yeah there before gene about um you know transitioning from being that boy and transitioning i guess into what you call like being a man and allure allowing you to do that 
if you could dive into that a bit deeper, because for what, for me personally, I went through the same thing with my partner. You know, we've been together for nearly 14 years now. So um, yeah, I had to go through the same thing and I had a choice to either stay being this boy or I step up. So um, yeah, if you could dive into that just because our male listeners, I think would definitely, definitely resonate get from, yeah. with it. Yeah, I would say as I was younger, um, I would spend a lot of my time looking for external validation mm. that was rooted in insecurity, you know, and um, a lot of my time was invested in, you know, looking at getting another date and going on dates and that led to serial monogamy. And um, because, as I mentioned before, I had a lack of love in myself that really manifested as um, uh, relationships that I kept sabotaging. Mm. They weren't very healthy. And this was a cycle for me. I kept going in days, being with someone for a little while. Eventually it fizzles out. Around the three-month mark, I found, was I just be not really interested. And, um, yeah, I suppose that uh, it was almost like having a bunch of loose ends, you know. I wasn't like a total fuckboy, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there'd be maybe couple people you were talking to that were reaching out to me and I'd reply and there'd just be things you know maybe uh what would you say um incubating mm -hmm. you know that might turn into something and um it just just divided my energy you know um it took me away from investing that energy into things that may be more meaningful mm -hmm. um so when I met Allura and all those maybes turned into no's and there was one yes, which was Allura, um, it was like bringing all my energy back. You know, I have a finite amount of energy. We all do. So instead of sharing it, it all came back to and to be concentrated with her. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was incredibly liberating, you know, because I didn't really admire that part of myself. I'd never admired men who um, spent a lot of time doing that. Um so to really find a committed relationship, it was like I was stepping into my ideal. Mm. You know, when I think about the best version of me, who is that? It's not the guy who goes on casual dates all the time for the sport of it. You know, like I want to really step up into being a wise man. Mm. Can I offer something in that that I really have noticed as well? It's like this, there's this vibe around, and you know, I experienced it with Jean and with other men in, you know, before around that there's always going to be a better option. Like there's always something more to go seeking. But once that loop gets closed and you put all your focus and attention on creating what's right there for you and what the potential is to be realised, like it's a bit of a biblical reference, but it's like creating the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Like you put walls and boundaries around creating your own paradise and there's no limit to what the level of like bliss and joy and creation and love and pleasure and all of that that can happen within the boundary of that creation because all your energy is focused in there and you're both intent on doing that so there's things that can then happen within the relationship boundaries that you might not even imagine you could experience if your energy is being leaked out and you, like spread around. Mm. And what we're finding is that we're able to really build the space within the relationship in a whole different way. And that I think demands, you know, from Jean to be a leader in that as well, to be able mm. to keep those walls like strong. Like I'm very clear about no like pornography I don't even like the energetics of that in our relationship and not to say that he doesn't have free will to choose like of course like you'd always be able to choose if that's something you want to experience but for me it's like what can you do to create a clear vessel where you can actually be um, creating your own experiences not having to reach out mm -hmm. and not just in the sexual area but in any area like um, just you know, creation and communication and, like, the trust and, you know, financially and all those things need to be actually really built in a really safe container. Mm. So I think that's what I feel when you step into that. It's an illusion that there's more in the other space in some ways. Sure. There's more available when you really get that energy focused in. Mm. 
Mm. And that's what I think it means to become that. And I think for a woman, if there's women listening, it's about really, you know, it was a gamble for me to say to him, because I was obviously very much felt the alignment. I was like, I would really love to pursue this relationship. But I could only pursue that relationship if it was on my terms, which were, I want you to exclusively develop this with me. So if I was going to be grey in that, I would be betraying myself Mm. in the relationship. I'd be saying, you know what, you can come and go as you please. I'll just be here waiting Mm. for for you to do that. And I wouldn't be commanding his respect either because if I want to be my own, like I suppose, you know, like the queen of my own domain, like the priestess of my own domain, I have to have a very clear boundary within myself to have my king show up and be by my side. So that's why I think it's really important for women to know that they have that ability to to step into that as well. Mm. Yeah, Mm. and to create that. That's really beautiful. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, that's what is so powerful about it is you're so, you know, I know what I want, but I'm also, I'm not going to falter to any of it. Like, this is what I want. And this is like literally where I'm at. I think sure. Like Jeannie would have seen that you'd have been like, Whoa, this is like exactly, I guess what I want, but this is very confronting as well. And that also you know allowed you to step up into that. Yeah, well, she was very gentle in her approach. Mm. Like, she was quite stern in that moment. But yeah. but when we're having the conversation, she was laying it out how it was, and she gave me total free will. And it was like, well, I've got this stuff over here that doesn't really mean much to me. Or I've got this potential thing over here that could make all my dreams come true because th- the feeling that I had for Allura, Allura and still have for her, it was undeniable. It was like, there's no way I'm letting this pass up. Even if I take a chance on this and it goes to crap, mm. like this is so much more important to me than anything else I'm going to find doing what I'm doing. Yep. Um, you know, I also think it's worth mentioning that, you know, I had a heartbreak. And I think a lot of most men go through some sort of, sort of heartbreak when they're quite young and they take it really hard and they get bitter. And for me, I took it really hard. I'm quite an emotional kind of guy. I've tamed those emotions a lot more these days as I've grown older and, and wiser, hopefully. But um, I think a big source for me was the pain of um, not wanting to get hurt again. So, you know, if you sabotage, you don't have to go through the pain again, but paradoxically, you create a lot of the pain. Mm, yeah. You know, so yeah. that that's what I was, was, you know, I would not let anyone get too close. Yep. And that was a way of being all in. Because if I'm all in, I might lose it all. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was, it was definitely a, a mechanism for avoiding pain. Yeah. Which, um, is a big part of what we do is helping people overcome that. That's very common. Yeah. Yeah. That conversation hit me real hard. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's good. A lot of, uh, pretty speechless. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of our conversations around that. Yeah. It's it's good. It's really powerful. It's, um, yeah, something that we talk about in King's legacy. It's like, you know, like you're saying, like, you know, sabotaging. So, but like you said, then you are creating the pain and pieces like that. Um, yeah, it's very interesting how we, you know, try to escape the pain, but escaping that pain is sometimes what's creating the pains that we experience. It's a, yeah, yeah, like you said, a very big paradox. And I'm sure a lot of people will be benefiting, you know, that conversation and how you express that for sure. Yeah, because for for me, the pain, like, and for how we we work with the pain, Mm. instead of being in avoidance of pain, we use pain as a portal for evolution because the fear that you feel about that pain repeating is only actually creating the loop that brings that pain into reality. Mm. So we want to collapse the relationship with pain so we can actually have a really beneficial experience of witnessing the truth of pain, Mm. which means we have to strip away the illusions. There's so many fear illusions that keep us fearing that that pain is going to come into our life. Mm. So a lot of the work is really around revealing how you are still seeing your experience as being driven by an undercurrent of fear. And that fear is going to keep creating pain for you in a loop. 
Um, and that's when we get freedom. That's when we liberate. And a lot of our work is about liberation from different aspects of our human experience so we can really evolve while we're here. And that's, I suppose, you know, my deepest passion and, and one you share as well, like in that space that if we're not liberated, then we're very much at the mercy of domination and control mechanisms on all levels, in love, in society, with our health. So we're really about <clears throat> that really deep self-love being about how can we find a way through pain and fear so we don't have to be in these unconscious control things that, mm. you know, get us and cause us to not be free in our experience. So we're very passionate about liberation as well as love um, mm. in yeah. our experience. And to your point, you know, avoiding the, the pain is a surefire way to, to bring the pain about. Mm. You know, it's, it's yeah. funny... A lot of us have these experiences in life that are really like traumatic and it's almost like the rest of our life becomes a game of avoiding that experience yeah. again. Mm. So everything in your life revolves around avoiding that one thing but then that means that that one thing in your life is your centre of the universe, mm. right? Mm. Everything revolves around it, it's the centre. So you're actually bringing it into existence. So a lot of Allura's... Um, core wound work is like revolutionary on that front just sitting with it feeling it metabolizing the emotion um that leads to freedom yeah mm -hmm. i work a lot with um being supported in the spaces of being unloved unworthy and unknown mm -hmm. and i find those three key patterns run through our existence for all of humanity pretty much mm. so being able to witness where you are living in a state of fear of being unloved or unworthy or unknown is really where we reverse <laughs> that loop and bring the power that we're investing in that repeating in our life back to ourselves mm. so we can create freedom um and for me the unloved wound was where this whole journey began so to be able to actually be in a relationship now i suppose has shown me how this work can get on the deepest levels of our unconscious programming because mm. that's how we're creating reality. And if we're not witnessing it and we're not revealing it and we're not working with it, we're not, we're not truly living. Mm. We're living in the smallest fraction of reality that's not really the whole yeah. because we're still looking for how that pain's going to show up. So to be able to work with that, and that's particularly what we do on retreats, being able to dive deep into those unconscious programs is where we seem to get really long-lasting shifts for people to mm. be able to really reconfigure how they look at their lives and their reality. And that's, yeah, very important for us mm. right now. Yeah, humanity is sort of heading. If we don't do this deep work now, that's kind of definitely where we're going to get tripped up. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah, so I've just good. got so much going through my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> just like, no, I know it's if funny. You, if you've got him quiet... <laughs> You're doing an unreal job. <laughs> you know, it's funny that there's no there's no substitute for the inner work. Mm. You know, you've got to put in the work. And this is um, where I think I fear psilocybin's going to go. You know, as we mentioned before, mm. it's another thing people are projecting outside of themselves as the answer. Sure. But these mystical experiences that occur, that can occur as a result of psilocybin, similar to what can happen in meditation or breath work or a satori moment or a near-death experience – you know, that can help reorganize the brain in a similar w way that almost like trauma does. Mm -hmm. You know, trauma is a really uh, negatively charged experience. So maybe we have an experience that causes that pain and that kind of sits the, at the top of the emotional hierarchy as the most painful thing we've experienced. And now we've got to avoid that. And um, those emotions at a time helped us survive. And to an extent, they still do. Like the most terrifying predator that induces the most fear is the one that's going to most easily eat you. Mm. In the same way, though, positive emotion uh, draws us toward it, okay? When you have the mystical experience, what they're finding is that the experience is so overwhelmingly blissful, blissful almost the opposite of trauma, that it knocks the negative emotional experience off the top of the emotional hierarchy that orients our lives and that real reorganizes the brain. Mm. So you can essentially knock out your fear and, and trauma with a connection to a greater whole. 
and then you come back more altruistic, more forgiving, more loving. You see everything in a whole new light. So there's lots of ways to get there, but um, I think that's a really interesting way, a mechanism of, of you know, these mystical experiences that are changing people's lives. Mm. Beautiful. How do um, I always wanted to know this. How did, like, I guess the creation of what you guys are doing together, how did that come about? <laughs> like, how did it all just, like, this is it? So I think we brought our, the elements we're most passionate about mm. together and we got a whiteboard and a blackboard at home, sorry, and we had one day where we kind of... Nearly tore each other's heads off. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we, me and you. <laughs> yeah. We actually, yeah, we actually had to... It was like we all had, we both had pieces of this puzzle and we had to put them together like mm. a jigsaw and... Um, at times, like, the pieces wouldn't quite fit, so we had to rearrange the whole puzzle and bring them together. And it was it was a work of... of Man, I'm thinking back to that. <laughs> That's happened a couple of times where... Okay, so first of all, there's no way it could be any other way. There's no way we were going to not create together. Yep. Like, this is all we do. We don't have another job. <laughs> like, this is we're full-time trying to figure this stuff out so we can have a positive impact on the world and, you know, support our lifestyles. That's mm-hmm. That's the dream. And we're both very passionate about our own modalities. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they're quite different on some levels. So it's like trying to put them together. We, we basically had to lay out each other's complete understanding of the nature of reality and see where a perception that I had corresponded to a perception where she we had. Over. Gotcha. And if we had something that we both agreed on, we'd go, okay, well, that's a pillar, say. But. Even language was a barrier because you could have this concept in abstraction and the words that you choose to articulate that could be so different from the words that, say, she chooses to articulate that. So it was just like, it was almost like being on the different sides of a glass panel, just I don't understand what you mean when you say (laughs) this. And It was a beautiful, like, it was challenging. It was challenging to bring... um, two individual bodies of work together to create something cohesive that someone could actually go and experience. But I think we've managed it with altered states. Like you'll have to come on and experience it for yourself. Definitely. But we have the elements of – because I my mystical journey lasted three years where I was pretty much daily mystical experiences, like the whole spectrum – Anything you could imagine on the mystical spectrum was happening to me spontaneously. I'd had this massive burst of DMT in my brain. So I was experiencing altered states of reality in every moment. And I was bringing that sort of knowledge and experience and feeling into the creation that we had. And Gene was bringing his psilocybin experiences and breathwork experiences and nervous system and understanding of like the science behind it and so we're kind of trying to meld it all together yeah i got 15 years of of personal coaching background as well beginning as a personal trainer becoming more holistic and then diving into things like mindset and emotions and thought patterns and how that impacts behavior which dictates levels of health so i had all these you know ideas and and things that i found were effective and just trying to put it in the melding pot and just pull out something that was coherent Mm. I think it's really interesting as well, like trying to um, maintain your individualism and your own, like we have unique streams of consciousness and we both have gifts that we're meant to bring to humanity. Mm-hmm. And even though we're co-creating, it's not an invitation to kind of drop our own unique streams and kind of just become one. It's about maintaining our own but running them side by side. Mm. And so that when we're, you know, at, particularly when we're at retreat, I think together people can really feel that they can get different aspects for their growth from each of us Mm -hmm. and we don't have to be doing the same line on everything to to make it work. And I think that's what I love about it, um, to be able to remain individual in the creation Mm -hmm. Um, because otherwise I think there's a sort of a, a trap that can sometimes happen where you feel like you have to, meld everything together and then it yeah and then it becomes homogenous and you're not really uniquely aligning to your own truth Mm -hmm. and for us i think it's so important that we keep our own streams no forcing not trying to force things together yeah Mm, beautiful that's so good yeah (laughs) (laughs) when when when's your next one we're gonna come 
Well, we've got a beautiful retreat in September yeah. uh, on the Central Coast, uh-huh. which is called the Inner Alchemist. And then we've got a retreat in uh, November called the Heart Shift down in Lawn, Victoria. That's our final two retreats for this year. Mm-hmm. And then we've got um, a tour all the way up the East Coast early August. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a tour all the way down to Melbourne in September of Altered States. So they're all on our Eventbrite page. But, yeah, we've got two massive tours and two retreats um, before the end of the year. Next mm. year we're hoping to really knock it up a level. We've booked in our first couples retreat. Beautiful. So um, that's going to be really powerful. We, we actually yeah. developed a bunch of processes that are completely original, um, designed to really crack open the heart and – yeah, I'm re- we're actually really excited to, to share yeah. that more couples work. We love the workshops. But we're kind of really passionate about being with people for a longer period of time. Sure. Because that's where we get to really understand them. And understand and connect and yep. like really get real change for people. Like it, mm. that's what we really want. Like we mm. want to be able to support people to have something that's lasting. And the workshops are a beautiful taster for that the vibe of us but yeah i my heart's really with retreats just to you guys would know imagine know immersing for three days with the work that you guys do as well well yeah, we you know. did a um Have you done retreats? A, yeah we did a two-day reconnection up in or down in melbourne oh, and that was pretty pretty powerful yeah there's pretty uh, for, for my own personal experience i've done a um a five-day it was like focused on business but as you know business is a direct reflection of us so it was like three days of like just us and then okay cool let's learn about systems and sales and all that type of stuff Mm. um so that was five days of 16 hours a day Mm. just like yeah you just entered the room (laughs) and as soon as you entered the room it was just like i don't know you just had this feeling of like oh god like that's a feeling it was just like oh god and then you started to really lean into it and um yeah that was probably one of my first ever experiences of like my own personal Mm. i guess like retreat like going through something for myself um which i never thought once again like expression was just something that was not really existent in my life and i was just going down there to learn about business and create the business and this was like you know four and a half years ago mm-hmm. like i had a had a uh, a dream and i didn't know how to create it so i was like oh yeah i'll go do this and i'll find out about it and then all of a sudden i'm doing a 45 minute standing up visualization of cutting the cord with my dad not being there for 22 years and (laughs) sobbing in front of everyone and just it was really beautiful and I guess like I was going through it and I come out of it and I like open my eyes and then I like turn around and there's like 15 people just staring at me I was like oh god I forgot I was (laughs) in this room (laughs) like I'm so seen right now and then all of a sudden bang like oh my god it's the first time I'm being seen by someone Mm. and I just dropped again and I I, I was on my hands and knees like like heaving like it was so profound oh it was such like a yeah profound moment yeah mm. and then i sat back down in the chair because i was pretty much like day one back end of day one so like i had four days of witnessing everyone else going through you know amazing things and similar things and um then you get to like day four and you go oh yeah that's right we're here to learn about <laughs> how to make a business and yeah. you know oh, i forgot about that what's um, my mission statement <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah and yeah. I love that. Yeah, it was really powerful. And he, he like, he took us through it all and we learned about all of these things. And then the main thing was like, okay, like, what do you want to do? But instead of going around the room and going, what do you want to do? And what do you want to do? He did this really powerful thing and something that I want to incorporate with our stuff. On day five, he walks in, he goes, chewing an apple. All right, you ready? Find out what you want to do. And we're like, yes, yes, yes. I can't wait. This is going to be so cool. What's it going to be? And he's like, See you in three hours. Just walked out. And we're just sitting here looking at each other and we're like, uh-huh, like this. And then all of a sudden sends us a voice note. Get the whiteboards, start writing. Whatever comes out, it's there. Get after it. Wow. Like literally, I've got a video on my phone. It was like three hours. And I was like, for the six months before that, nothing came out. Like mm-hmm. nothing. And I was sitting there going, what do I want to do? And imposter syndrome. Why is people going to think of this? And, you know, oh, why would they want to listen to you? You've never done this before. All of these things. And then I got that whiteboard. It just started flooding, just flooding mm-hmm. out, visualizing, you know, who I wanted to work with and all of this stuff. And yeah, it was really, really profound. So I do agree. Like working with people on a longer period is, yeah, very, very profound. That's the quantum leap. 
Gotcha. Like when That's probably you, my first one. Yeah, when you disconnect from your regular reality and your identity of who you think you are because mm. you're not in the same microcosm of the reminder of yourself, mm. you liberate to actually see who you truly are and express that through. Yeah. That's a hugely powerful experience, which is why moving out of your everyday life to go on retreat is is where that big stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. There's this really beautiful principle that comes when you do the inner work and even the spiritual work that it's not about learning to shine as much as it is about learning to take away the blocks to the light. Mm. Okay, once you remove what you're not, you can allow what you are to shine. That's what I think rings true for me, hearing that story. Beautiful story. Yeah, amazing. Mm. But um, just once you do that work, remove all those blocks, it just came out. Know. Yeah, I didn't even like like yeah, I didn't even the stuff that I was writing on the whiteboard. I was like, why am I writing this? And then I like sat down with it and looked at it, and I was like, of course, like like I'm speaking my heart's message of like who I am. So of course that's what I want to do. Yeah. Like why wouldn't I, why would I want to do anything else but that? You know? And it's non logical, right? Like mm. it's intuitive and felt and more real than anything you could have just sat and gone through in your mind to kind yeah. of create. It's a, mm. fe- a felt sense of what you know to be true, which e- yeah, is powerful. Exactly, yeah. And um, e- even recently, there are some some strategies and downloads that I've had over the past couple of weeks. And um, like you said to me, you're like, I don't know how you like create what you just created. And I was like, to be honest, mate, I, sometimes I don't know either. But it's just, I just like once again, I get out of thinking of what should I do? And it's more like what's within here? Like what, what would I want to hear if I was going through a, deep amount of pain or what would be really resourceful for me at the moment and yeah it's really powerful when you yeah get out of that i guess logical like you know what should i do and it's more just starts speaking it just starts to come through yeah yeah that's how my body of work got downloaded to me because i was seeking the answers to the design of reality because i was like there's something fundamentally challenging here that we feel separate from ourselves what is the energy of separation where we keep seeking something external outside of us to complete us internally Mm. why is there separation here and that was the foundational question that I took a couple of years to go and explore for myself which is the basis of my work but the answers were non-logical and they came through lived experience and they came through a deep intuitive knowing of a sense of the truth Mm. as opposed to what we'd been taught and I, I had to kind of really go as a blank slate and rewrite everything I'd learned about healing, about who we are as humans, about what we're here to do and really just create from a whole new level of, of, of awareness and knowledge that wasn't something I could logically come up with. Mm. And I think that's what we're all here to do. We all have a unique ray of consciousness that we're all here to express as, whether that be through the body or the mind or the voice or hands or whatever you're here to create we're, we're all here to download that mm. and it's not necessarily a logical step through of what you need to do yeah. and that's what i'm you know and what we really want to support that people to have their unique stream of consciousness come through mm. at this time yeah mm. a heart shift a heart shift yes yeah. I'm letting it all. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you say a new one, I was like, oh, I should do that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds so good. So cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, So powerful. Um, We did have a uh, viewer send in a question, actually. I just did see that come in before. Um, their question was, uh, where was it? There it is. What has been your biggest lessons since coming together? Lesson. Allure is always right. <laughs> <laughs> that is an important lesson. <laughs> it's funny, I learned that lesson too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, some sometimes um, my mind, not not s- sometimes, it, in the past, through the journey, the mind's kind of gotten in the way mm. and um, trying to be logical. Yeah. And the more I get out of my own way, which Allure is always kind of leading the charge on, the more things kind of work out. Mm. Like it wasn't really a joke. <laughs> like I've learned <laughs> it. I've got to just 
trust the lure. <laughs> <a little laughs> so that's, that's one. Is this a reflection back to you? Though? Yeah. Trust I should, I should take this advice <laughs> on you. <laughs> yeah. I can be always right. Exactly. Um, so what else? I, I think the biggest lesson I've learned is that there is the potential for really amazing committed love here. Because mm. prior to, you know, being in this space, I wasn't really that loving to myself and in a relationship. And I don't think until I've had the reflection of Jean, I've really actually learned what it feels like to really love myself mm-hmm. and to be in a loving space where I am loved. And I think that's an incredible lesson and experience. I think my whole reality is shifting in that frequency, yeah. like of being love and the expression of love. And even though we have that love between us, it's really interesting because it permeates everything. Mm. Like the love doesn't differentiate or separate now. It's like I literally feel love for every human <laughs> yeah. like on the planet and – it's not just like we have romantic love. It's That's one kind of love, but there's just an overarching love that's here for everyone. Mm. Um, and I think to be able to feel that is being really a special lesson because um, you've got such a big heart. And th- also the trust in being able to be in that loving space mm. and to surrender to it as sort of the feminine in that, just be able to let go and not have to... Um, be perfect or hold on or manage stuff and just be in it is being really beautiful. That's a really beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Powerful. I could listen to you guys talk about yeah, this. So good. <laughs> yeah. So good. <laughs> love. Yeah. Love. <laughs> love. <laughs> well, thank you for both coming on. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Been, been a pleasure. It's great to yeah. chat with you guys. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for yeah jumping on and saying yes and giving us an hour of your time. Greatly appreciate it. And all those little nuggets of wisdom and love and expression and everything I'm like definitely going to listen back to this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. So good. I've, uh, I've got some conversations to have with my partner, so <laughs> thank you. I've got thank some conversations so to have with myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That's, yeah. That's we, um, it's gone fast. Yeah. yeah. I just looked down. I was just like, oh, hour. Wow, right. that went good. <laughs> um, there is one way that we do wrap up, and this is a completely open-ended question for both of you. Mm-hmm. What would be your main message to the people that are listening to this podcast Mm. love yourself love yourself first begin treating yourself like someone you care about if you find that you're not very loving to yourself you can start now Mm -hmm. all you need to do is just start Mm. Fuck, I need to hear Beautiful. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at Maxi too. He's just looking at me. He's like, yeah, we both did. <laughs> you just, you just have to start. Yeah. You know? And you don't have to be perfect to be worthy of love. Because mm. if you were perfect, you'd be God. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So you don't need to be perfect before you can start loving yourself. That's a good message. Mm. I like that. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's pretty much encapsulated it. Like that's at the core of this. Mm. I sense that like wherever you're at, there's so much potential awaiting for you, whatever moment you're at. Mm. There's no true block to your evolution unless you believe that you're done, unless you believe that whatever situation you're in is all there is. Yeah. That belief will keep you in a loop. But there's so many beautiful humans out there that want to support you right now, us and yourselves and so many others. So just believe that you're evolving. Just believe that change is possible and that you can keep evolving through whatever you're experiencing Mm. and that there's lots of people that want to help you. Mm. And I think that's probably at the core of it with the love love and evolution. I, I was waiting for your, both of your I comments hope. to like align to each other. Yes. <laughs> I was like, here they come. Yeah. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be yeah, here. Yeah, thanks again uh, so much, guys. Thank you guys so, so much. Welcome. So welcome. Um, Can't wait to uh, experience one of your retreats. Yeah. yeah. Very excited. Yeah, definitely. Good definitely. Yeah. Have you. Where, can, uh, where can people reach you before? Um, yeah, so both on our Instagram and Facebook, mm. Alira Halliwell and Jean Kelly Loves You yep. and The Heart Shift on yep. Instagram and Facebook. Beautiful. We're pretty oh. active. You can connect with yeah. us on there. Cool. Yeah, I'll um I'll tag them down in the description. So if you're listen- viewing on YouTube or listening on Spotify, then you'll have them tagged down. 
Thank you. Tag down below. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. Sweet. All right. All right. Thank no. you for listening. Yeah, thank yeah, you. It's been great. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Unfortunately, it is only Tahi, Max, and I on the next one. It won't be as full of wisdom as this one. But, oh, no. you know, you've we do got have some fun games. You've got being more loving to yourself. <laughs> oh, we oh, are. The, the podcast that we've got organized with us, it's a lot more lighthearted and a lot more fun <laughs> together. So. Fun. Yeah. 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 Cool. Alrighty. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Peace.